What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com. Um, in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the top tips that you need to know about for modeling in SketchUp in 2018. Before we get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. This course is a comprehensive SketchUp course that'll teach you from start to finish everything you need to know about modeling in SketchUp. I wanted to put a course together that contained all the information that I would teach in a full two-day training, but I wanted to be able to make it available at a fraction of the cost. Topics range everywhere from basic to advanced modeling techniques to modeling for layout to the basics of photorealistic rendering. So this course, if you have any questions about SketchUp, this course should answer them. So if you're interested in some more in-depth training, make sure to check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. This course is available for pre-order, so if you pre-order it now, you'll be able to get it for 40% off. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I wanted to put together a list of the top things that you can use um, to kind of up your modeling game in 2018. More information and tutorials on all of these tips can be found at the links in the notes down below. So the first thing, one of the most important things that you can do when you're modeling in SketchUp is to use a three button mouse. And we've talked about this a little bit in the past, but a three button mouse allows you to navigate around models a lot more quickly. And the reason it allows you to do that is because you don't have to go searching off to the side for tools like the zoom tool or anything like that. or coming over here and tapping the pan tool or that kind of thing. Instead, what you can do is you can just navigate around your model by clicking and holding the three button or the center mouse button. So first of all, you can zoom in and out by scrolling your mouse wheel in and out. And then if you click the center mouse button down, you can activate the orbit tool. And then you can also pan by holding the shift key. This is a lot quicker than uh, moving around trying to use the buttons off to the side. So you really should be using a three button mouse. Tip two is you should be modeling using keyboard shortcuts. And so whenever I teach a lesson in SketchUp, I try to talk about what the actual um, keyboard shortcuts for the tools that I'm using are because it can be really slow to have to come over here and click on these buttons and then come over here and model and use these tools one at a time because you have to go kind of hunting and searching for the right tools and then uh, you have to come in here and every time that you're modeling you have to come over here if you're not modeling with keyboard shortcuts and click on a new tool every time you need to swap tools so um, it's a lot faster if you can just use the tools that are kind of built into SketchUp you can see how I can come here come in here really fast and just model things really quickly using those keyboard shortcuts as opposed to how slow it is modeling everything using the buttons off to the side. So again, it's all it's all about that speed and all about using those shortcuts. When you initially start, this can be a little bit difficult until you learn the keys. Um, but as you model, if you just keep practicing and you keep using those and you just learn them for each individual tool, then pretty soon it just becomes reflex and it saves you a ton of time. So one of the things that's really important when modeling SketchUp is that you group and organize your geometry. And the reason for this is eventually you're going to want to make changes to whatever you're modeling. And if you don't group your geometry, it gets really difficult to make changes. So like for example, let's say that I have these boxes and I want to move this box so that it touches this face. So I'm going to move this across so that it touches this face. Well now, since these objects weren't grouped geometry, you can see how these faces have merged. So if I come in here and I want to move this box somewhere else, you can see how I can't do that anymore because the faces are merged. And I could undo this and then move things back around and uh, do stuff like that. But once you kind of merge this geometry, coming in and making changes can get really difficult. Where on the other hand, if I was to take these objects off to the side over here and I was to select them, right click on them and click make group for each one of them, then I can move this box over and I can move it back without having to worry about the faces merging. So like let's say for example that I wanted to put this box on this face. I could do that. I can move everything around and I can make changes. And then if I want to make changes to this box, like for example let's say that I wanted to come in here and just make this face a little bit smaller or something like that, I can double click inside the group and I can make those changes without it affecting anything else in your model. So this is just a really smart way to set your model up so that you can make easy changes in the future. So in addition to grouping geometry in your model, it's also important that you model using components. So a lot of you know that components are basically objects that uh, 
you you can have multiple different instances of in your model and when you adjust one of them all of them adjust so with group geometry you, you can group geometry and then make a copy of it but there's no link between those different groups however like in this model for example you've got a table and chairs in it and you can see how each one of these is an instance of this component group number eight and so what that means is since these are modeled as components as opposed to groups I can come in here and I can make a change to one of these objects like let's say that I just wanted to add like a little cutout or something on this face and you can see how when I make this change that change is reflected in every single copy of this instance in your model so when you have copies of components you only have to change one object and all the other objects will change with it so instead of having to go through and recopy all of these chairs every one of these chairs has this little notch cut in it now so and people people ask a lot of the time when you use groups and when you use components and a general good rule is if you have anything that you think you're gonna have a copy of you want to use components so if you're coming in and you're modeling like walls and that sort of thing within a uh, within like an apartment or something like that you would probably use groups to group a set of walls but if you have anything like a set of chairs or if you have table legs or anything that's going to repeat then you're going to want to use components and components are a really important thing to be using when you're working in SketchUp. So the next tip is to keep your models organized using the outliner and so we're going to use this table and chairs as an example again. The outliner is a tool in your tray that allows you to keep different things in your models organized. So like for example, this is a table that I downloaded from 3D Warehouse and it basically came in labeled component number two and then it has a whole bunch of different groups inside of it. So what you can do is you can use the outliner to keep things organized in your model. Like for example, what I want to do in this case is instead of having this called component number two, you can right click in here and you can rename this table and chairs and so then you have an overall model that's table and chairs and then you've got all of your different groups inside of here and you can see how as I click on these they're getting highlighted in my model and so what I can do in this case I'm gonna change the definition name of this component and you can see how there's multiple different copies of this group number eight and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up in my entity info and I'm gonna call this chair and so you can see how each one of these got adjusted so that now its name is chair and then this other one I'm gonna rename to table and so now you can see inside this group which ones of these are chair objects and which ones are table objects and so what this allows you to do is now you could come in here if you wanted to and select multiple objects and you could hide them so that you only have one chair you can see what's hidden within these groups but if you keep everything organized inside the outliner then it gets a lot easier to work with these models as you're modeling if you start grouping different groups and components within your model then everything becomes a lot more manageable so um, this may not seem like a big deal when you only have a table and chair model in here but when you have when you start getting tables and refrigerators and appliances and other things like that what you can do is you can start grouping them within an object so like for example I could take all of these by clicking on one and then doing a shift and clicking on the bottom one and I could right click and I could make those a group and I could call that group chairs so now what I would have is I would have a table and chairs model where I could hide the chairs or I could hide the cha table separately. You can see how it just gets a lot easier to manage when you do that. So I would really recommend that you start using the outliner to keep your models organized as you go. One of the things beginners really struggle with when they're working in their models is off-axis modeling. And what I mean is a lot of the time when people are working, what starts to happen as their models get bigger and bigger they start drawing and they'll draw a few things on axis and then a few things off axis and then they'll just kind of move around in the model and before you know it things aren't at right angles and you've drawn things that are a little off and you can't create faces and it just becomes a real problem and so modeling on axis is really important and so one of the things that you can use to help you with that is using inference locking with the arrow keys and so inference locking with the arrow keys allows you with basically any tool to be able to lock things to an axis so you can see how right here if I move if I start a line using the line tool 
tool and I kind of move it over here, it looks like it's along the green axis, but it's not because that line didn't turn green. Well, what you can do is you can tap the left arrow key on your keyboard and that'll lock you to the green axis. And you can do this for all the different axes. So you can tap the right arrow key to lock to the red axis. You can tap the up arrow key to lock to the blue axis. So like for example, I could lock I could lock a rectangle to that axis, I could tap the right arrow key, and I could lock a circle to the red axis. So basically you can use this to keep everything in your model on axis. One of the things that you're going to be doing a lot of when you're working in SketchUp is creating copies of objects. And one of the cool features that's built in as a part of the Move tool is the ability to make copies of objects with that tool. To do that, simply select your object, activate the Move tool by tapping the M key, and then click to move your object. If you tap the control key, you'll activate copy mode, allowing you to create copies of objects using the move tool. You can set distances of movement by typing in values in the box down below using your keyboard. Another great feature of the move tool is the ability to create arrays, or copies of objects in a row. For example, if we were to take this object and use the move tool to create a copy 10 feet out, along the green axis, you could type in X5 and hit the enter key to create five copies of this object, each spaced at 10 feet. In addition, you can also make changes to the number of copies that you've created. So as long as this tool is active, you can type in a new value, X10 for example, and hit the enter key in order to change the number of copies that you've created. You can type in X5, or X4 to bring the number of copies down and hit the enter key. In addition, you can also use the move tool to create equally spaced objects between two points. So for example, if you created a copy of this object 50 feet out, and then you typed in divided and the number of copies you want to create, you'd create five equal spaced copies if you typed in divided by five and hit the enter key. This can be hugely time saving when creating copies in your SketchUp models. So the next tip is using the Soften Smooth Slider to create smooth faces in your model. And so this is an example I did a while ago with the extension Flowify, where I took a couple of logos from Star Wars and I bent them along a curved shape. So you can see how those are bent along this curved face. And one of the things you're going to know, and this is something you'll run into as you start working with more advanced geometry, is that it's got all these extra geometry in here, these extra lines, and those all indicate where it kind of bent this along this face. Well, what SketchUp has is it has a tool built in in your tray that allows you to hide those lines to make this look smooth. And so that tool is called Soften Edges. And if you can't see that in your tray, you can go up to Window, Default Tray, click Soften Edges in order for that to show up. And basically what this gives you is this gives you a slider that you can slide back and forth in order to hide geometry within your model. So you can see how if I slide this over to zero, it actually unhides some geometry. But if I click and drag this and I start dragging it to the right, you can see how it's hiding some of this geometry so that it's smooth. And so the other thing you can do is you can check this box for soften coplanar. And so you can see how what that did is that took this object that has this hidden geometry in here, which you can see if you go to view hidden geometry, it's still in there. So if I was to come in here, like for example, and click on this line and uncheck the box for soften, then you can see how this is actually in here as geometry as a line. So it's all still in there, but what you've done is you've hidden it so that everything looks smooth in your model. So this is a really good tip for once you start getting complex geometry that you've created. So tip nine is to use 3D warehouse models. So a lot of the time when you're creating models, you're on a little bit of a deadline. And so what that means is you're sitting here, you're trying to model this house, but then you're trying to figure out you need to create an image with cars in the road and you've got to have plantings along here. And it just can get really overwhelming having to model all of that stuff. And so the great thing about SketchUp, one of the huge benefits is you've got this built in 3D warehouse full of models. So you can go up to File, 3D Warehouse, Get Models, and that'll open up your 3D Warehouse options. And what you can do is you can do a search for all of these 3D models that are already pre-built that you can bring into your model. 
So like for example, if I wanted to do a search for a car, I could go looking for a car and one of the cool things about this is this shows you how big the models are if you mouse over them. Like you can see how as I move over these objects, it tells me this is nine megabytes, this is 678 kilobytes, so that's more of a lightweight model. Um, so you can see by looking at each one of these how big they are and how much they're gonna slow down your model. But you can bring this stuff in really quickly and really easily. And so let's say for example that I wanted to bring this Toyota Paso car into this model. You can click on this object and then you can just click download just to bring that into your model. And so I can bring this in and you can see how it's scaled a little large. So you generally have to have kind of an idea of some of the tools for scaling objects down to make your scale look all right. But you can see how I was able to quickly and easily bring that car in without having to model a car. So you can use this to kind of detail out your model. So I brought in all these 2D face me plants from the 3D warehouse, this car from the 3D warehouse. That way I could just focus on what I was actually trying to model. And then the last tip is to save your camera views with scenes. And so what that means is a lot of the time you can spend a lot of time flying around a model trying to find a view that you like. But then if you don't save that view, then you're going to have to fly around and find it again. And so what you can do is once you find a view that you like, and this is a model that was created in Placemaker, which is a city creation extension for SketchUp. But once you finally find a view that you like, like let's say you kind of like this zoomed out view that's kind of looking down on the city from this angle. Well, what you can do is you can go to View, Animation, Add Scene. And what that's going to do is that's going to add a new scene. And now if you rotate off of this and then you go back and you click on that scene, what it'll do is it'll take you back to that view. And you can go inside the scenes manager in your tray and edit all the different properties that get saved along with this. So things like camera location, geometry, styles, all that different stuff. But you can use this to save a bunch of views that you like so that you can kind of move back and forth between them really quickly without having to go hunting for them. So this can get really important when you're doing like interior views of houses and stuff like that. Um, because you can just go back to those views whenever you want to. That's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you know about some of these? Do you find them helpful? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So please make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.